programming comes in languages, just like human languages. And in fact, there's a lot of, there's a lot of similarity between programming languages and human languages. Just like programming, just like human languages that ha use different words, different ways of putting those words together, different kinds of constructs, different syntax in order to essentially, now there's, there's some argument there, but for the sake of this discussion, I would say to say essentially the same thing. Behind me is the Taj Mahal. I can say that pretty much in any language, but the way I say it in different languages is very different. Computer languages is, are, are actually similar to that. Lots of different ways of saying essentially the same thing. And in computer languages, even more so than in human languages, the same thing is pretty clear. I want to know whether I put your notifications in this list or not. That's what I'm trying to accomplish, and I use different languages to do that. So what are some examples of programming languages? Java, C Sharp, C++, Visual Basic, Python, PHP, Perl. Those are all names that you might have heard of languages. And when you hear those names, what you should think is, ah, that's the way that they construct the commands or the statements inside the programming language. Really what they're trying to do is probably essentially the same regardless of which languages they use, but they're using a different way to say it. And we'll, we'll look at some examples in a moment. So most languages in the beginning, they were developed for a particular purpose. Uh, COBOL, for example, is a, is a language that was developed specifically for business applications. Um, we have other languages that were uh, adapted or created specifically for other purposes. C++ or C originally and then C++ was created to be the most efficient way of programming. And so each one of them has sort of a, 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 an ancestry, a reason why it was created in the first place, a reason why someone thought the world needed a new language that was optimized for something or other. But as it turns out, the longer a language goes on, the longer it exists, the more it takes on and the more abilities it takes on until essentially all modern mature languages do essentially the same thing. And so sometimes we'll still choose a language based on um, a specific application and, and what it really does well, especially if we're creating things that have to run ultra fast. We may choose one of these languages like C or C++ that run ultra fast, but in general the longer a language goes, the more it seems to do the things that other languages do and the choice between language A and language B uh, becomes a lot more arbitrary. You don't have to choose language A or language B. So just like human languages, we really only need one computer language. We could get by if the entire world spoke Hindi. That would be just fine. Nothing would go wrong in the world because the entire world spoke Hindi. Hindi is perfectly capable of, um, of expressing any concept that I might want to express. Um, and so just like that, we really only need one computer language, but it's not likely that we're ever going to ever have one computer language. And the reason is more um, political than technical. People have favorite languages, people have biases towards languages, people have languages that they, quote, grew up on, that they know very well, people have languages that they believe are superior because of one thing or another, um, and they form allegiances to languages. So you should understand that as well. And especially when you talk to programmers, you'll see a certain pride that they, that they express in the language that they use. What I want you to know is that pride is possibly technical to some extent, but by and large it really has to do with this is, I'm part of this group, we use this programming language, and, this is, um, uh, and that's why you know, I stand behind it. It's kind of like my home team, right? Okay. Um, so and the last concept for me to introduce you to in programming languages is the idea of high-level languages and low-level languages. Now I said there's lots of different languages and they're all essentially the same. That's on in one place. Put that to the side. Now let me give you a different concept about different kinds of languages. There are languages that are easy to write, but the computer would never know what to do with them. And there are languages that the computer knows exactly what to do with them, but they're almost impossible to write because they're at such a detailed level, such a low level, that, um, that it would be almost impossible for you to write a big program using them. So let me give you this as an example. Um, computer programs give instructions, right? My instruction is uh, raise your right arm. There it is. I say raise your right arm. Now that's a high level command, right? I'm, I say to you raise your right arm, but really what happens inside your brain is lots and lots of teeny little micro movements which say flex this muscle and then uh, if, if you see the velocity of your arm getting too high 
lower that muscle. As you flex this muscle, relax this muscle. There's just a million smaller things that have to happen in order to make raise your arm happen. Same thing in computer languages. I say uh, light up the notifications button. That may be a very high level statement. Or, yeah, yeah let, 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 I'll use that as an example because a real example would be too, uh, too hard to understand. R uh, light up the notifications button is my statement. Well, what does that mean? That means lots of different things. That means switch out this icon for this icon. That means engage a mouse over action on the, on the icon. There's all sorts of small, small commands, small things that happen. So that's the idea of a high-level language and a low-level language. Computer programmers write in high-level languages. They're languages that allow us to say things in a very short form. The computer itself, there's a processor inside that computer, and the processor runs one command, one statement at a time. But it doesn't run the command that says light up the notification icon. It runs a command that might say something like um, uh, take this one small piece of memory and shift it over one place. Now how does take this one small piece of memory and shift it over one place relate to light up the notification icon? Well, light up the notification icon step by step can be what's called compiled into, uh, in, into those lower level statements. The computer only has a very small limited repertoire of things that it actually does. Our high level programming statements allow us to group thousands and thousands of those low level statements into combinations that we can trigger just by a few words inside of our computer program. So computers actually run on low level languages. Languages, and I'll show you an example of these low langu level languages in a moment. But the low level languages are the actual code that the computer runs and the high level languages are the languages that we program in. And for all intents and purposes, when you hear somebody say, I'm a programmer, you can imagine that they're programming in one of these high level languages. You can also imagine that their high level language is being translated or compiled into that low level language that actually makes the computer run.